So yeah, I'm going to talk about how to consume and create APIs as easy as we can read and save a file. Why would you like to do that? Just because like APIs are for developers mainly, but we want to make it accessible to everyone, and everyone knows how to read and save files. But first, let's talk about Parinumeric. So I'm a developer, a web and mobile developer at Parinumeric. What is Parinumeric? Parinumeric is part of the Department of Information and Communication of uh, the Paris City Hall. Its uh, main goal is to inform the public via the website paris.fr and also street boards around the city. Uh, its projects are mainly like 70 specialized websites and mobile apps. They cover special events in Paris, like Nuit Blanche, Paris Plage, or there's a website to search jobs, for example. Human resources at Paris Numérique. It's mainly 70 people on the call center. They're here to answer Parisian questions, but also 35 uh, people working on website and audiovisual content. They provide content for uh, Paris Numérique websites. And we are only four, five developers. I'm one of them then. What are the main projects at Paris Numeric? The main one is Paris.fr. It's like the website of the city, and it also provides services as uh, uh, information about swimming pools or tennis courts. So that's the, the big project, and we are actually working on a new version of it. There's also Cuffer.paris.fr. This website is about cultural, cultural events in Paris. And you can find like uh, great events uh, around around Paris. And the third one would be api.paris.fr, where you could access live data about Paris that we can share with you. So let's talk. Let's start the talk. What is a file? Well, you'll tell me you, you know what is a file. But let's see a bit. What it con what, what's part of the file? Wikipedia says a computer file is a resource for strong information which is available to a computer program and is usually based on some kind of durable storage. Two main information to, to retain. Information is the data. File contains data and it makes you, it, you can access to data through the files. And also storage, which is persistent, meaning that when you set it, when you put data in a file, you you expect to access this back later, the same way you left it. With a file, you can create, read, update, and delete information. You, once you open a file, you can simply change the, the data inside it and also delete it, so you can manage data inside the file. And this file, you can store it on any device you like, like hard drives, memory sticks, or even in the cloud. It also have two. It also have properties. Like you can set restriction to access to a file. You can prevent people, some some people, to write or read, and you can also ex prevent the execution of a file. And also, a file has metadata, uh, simply like last date modification or the other the file or innovation. But th to manipulate those files, you need a file manager, and it's quite easy to take the hand on this, on this kind of tool. It's just creating, moving, and uh, editing files through uh, a file manager. To resume about, a bit about this, so a file is a data container. It's persistent on any device you put it in. You can create, read, update, and delete the data. You can set access permissions. You can, it has metadata that inform you about what is the file, and you organize them by a file manager. So now let's see on the other end, what is an API? API uh, in software development says, the main goal of an API is to reuse logical parts of a program without knowing the whole mechanism. Well, I'm a web, de I'm a web developer. It's too general to, for me. So I will be more focused on the web context of an API. And in web APIs, uh, API are focused on data than more than functionality. So it, what it does in a web API is just like sharing data between the client and the server. So it's all about accessing the data through uh, con in a connected way between clients and server. 
For example, the Instagram API is just about getting the, the data that is on the Instagram server, and also you can update and leave comments, but never you change the way uh, Instagram func f is functional. You just update the, the content of it. So main thing to remember about an API, it's also about the, um, manipulating data, and this data is also persistent in a way that it stays on the server side. Web API can also have properties. You can restrict the access of an API. You can say that you need a token, a special token to, to access your API. You need to follow some rules to be able to retrieve the data from what you need. And you can also have metadata on this API, like versioning, authoring, or a, a date of uh, last modification, for example. You can manipulate the, the API. Well, for example, the APG console helps me to manipulate the Instagram API, and this is a tool like simple to take hands on, and you can play with Instagram API through the, con the APG console. So as we can see from what we saw earlier about the file, API, web APIs and files can be the same. However, web APIs is not just a file. It has two more properties that we kind of saw before. It's connected. It makes the link between a server and a client. So that's something that the file can't do, but a web APIs allow that. And it's also structured. You, m you may know that APIs is like JSON structured or XML structured. So the content you'll get from an API will always have the same format and you can trust on that and you, you, can, you can work on, on data that comes from APIs knowing that it's structured. So to me, like, I could say like web APIs is a file but it's connected and structured. So in, a, in a fancy way, we can say that web API is a smart connected file. It's more than a file but it still should be like a file. It sounds good, no? But for who? For who? There are only two types of actors involved in working with APIs. The creators of an API and the consumers. But they both need an API management to, to, to work with API. Just as you need a file manager to, to m organize your files and manipulate them. So what we what we did at Paris Numérique, at Paris Numérique for, and we did this kind of API management system, which I showed you before, is api.paris.fr. It allows you then to get live data from uh, our server, and it gives you the tool that manipulates the data. It's quite simple to take hands on. Uh, the documentation is pretty clear. You've got all the, the, um, the specification of a classic API, you also have this kind of console where you can set parameters to get the data and uh, manipulate exactly what kind of data you, you want to retrieve. And also it's focused on people, meaning that we don't want only developers to access to those data. We want every Parisian that are interested in data of the city to, to get hands on this API. So we, we install a forum answering question and helping people to access the Paris data. Okay, th so that's good for consumers, one of the two types of uh, actors we saw. But what about creators? What about people that want to share their own data? What about Parisians that want to share their data and make, make it accessible through APIs? So we want, we want Parisians to participate to the data we provide, to the data we provide to them. And well, for that, you can do the same way we did, build an API management. So that's what we did. We did uh, the, the API engine generator behind api.pyos.fr is called Make Me API. It's open source, you can get it, you can work on it, you can make it your own, but like, it's not that easy to take hands on. Well, there are many features you can use. There, there's a road generator and document generator, which is based on the comments you leave on your source code and it's not 
that it's data ag agnostics, meaning like you can use MySQL or Mongo or even CSV data. So it's pretty. You, you can you, you can do bit more or less whatever you want with it, and you can provide this data. Well, you need to still know how to code. You need to code m models for that. For that, like this example of a coffee model, which will retrieve the data from the database and serve it through the API. And also, what we see is this uh, uh, API can can evolve, meaning like it's a versioning API, so you can create a new version of a, a, a method to get different uh, different filtering of the data. But there's an issue. You need to know at least those words, and well, you need to know how to code to use the the engine to generate API. However, what what I'm talking about is making web API as accessible as files. And when you access files, you don't have to know those words. You you don't need to understand those words to to be able to manipulate files. So, why should it be that complicated to 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 manipulate APIs? Why why can't it be as easy as manipulating files? And well, the most important part in web APIs is not about the developers that use them, the developers that that that, uh, that um, provide them, but what's important in web APIs is the data. It's the only one you want to know. You don't want to know how you can access the data. You just want the data. You don't want to know how you can provide the data. You just want to share the data. And well, that data is usually in files, and because everyone knows how to use files, and every no one knows how to manage data in files. And this file, sometimes, well, you send it yourself to a cloud-based API to share it as an API. But most of the time, and that's what we see at Paris Numérique, is they send it to developers or data, manage, data managers that transform this file into an API. And also, sometimes those developers use themselves cloud-based API to share their data. But, well, to, it shouldn't be that hard, and you shouldn't have to, to ask developers to share your data uh, as an API. So. To me, like there should be a better, a simple way to make your file a smart and connected file. And I'm going to show you how to make it. So here is api.paris.fr. It's like a, a, a local copy. So the thing is pretty is empty. You you have no data here. Here should be the listed the data that you can access. And here. I have my data. It's a CSV file of uh, Wi-Fi hotspots you can find in Paris. Well, you won't, you won't be able to read it, but anyway, it's just a CSV file with address and uh, da and metadata about uh, all the hotspots, the Wi-Fi hotspots. So what I want to do is take that file, and it should be just as simple as a right click on that file. And maybe if I If I zoom on it, I just want to make me smart and connected, as we saw. So that's what I'm going to do. Do you want me to make smart and connected? Yes. And it loads me this, the, the website, the, the API.Paris website, with the data generated. What it did is it filled the the database with hotspots. You all that database was empty at start, and it all put it in the database and created the basic model of create, read, and updates, where you can then click on them and access it the same way that we share our data by editing the parameters and just accessing the data you, that was at first in the in the CSV file. So to me, I think it's possible. It's possible to make that CSV file becoming an API, and it shouldn't be as hard as being a developer and knowing all the, 
the technology. It should just be just right-clicking on the CSV file and making it smart and connected. Thank you. I'm done. Do you have any question? <coughs> Actually, I, I wanted I wanted the, the talks to be named "Right Click to API," but they, they didn't. It, it's, it's their talk, right? But when I saw it, uh, it really made me think about that, which I think is great. Do you use it uh, uh, internally since when? No, no, we don't use. Oh, it. you don't use it yet. It's okay. It's just like an ID, and we we worked on it really quickly just to. Uh, to sh have a small show, and but it's not it's not up to production, and it's just about thinking, making data easily accessible to everyone. And uh, it works on any kind of file. It's what on any kind of file right now. Well, yeah, it can be any kind of file. It depends on the way you you pass the file. You know, y you just have to define models to read files, and the CSV file is quite easy because it's line after lines. But it could be a JSON file. You could, as long as it's structured and you can read it, then you can transform it, put it in the database, and share it through API. Yeah. So the, the, the thing is, you, your job is, uh, so you work for a city hall, right? For a merit yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? So maybe it's because as developer, uh, we like to do that. But why did you develop a tool that um, did you check on the market th solutions or no? You, internally, you said this is how it should be. About 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 the, the solution you're presenting. No, it, it's just like in 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 Paris Numeric, what we want to do is make the Parisian participate to the development of their own city. So that's a bit what's happening to the new version of uh, Paris.fr. We we ha we are asking Parisians to be involved in their website because it's a website for them. So we want them to, to participate to, to the development and a bit in the same way, we want them to share the data. Like you, you can access, we provide data that we have about swimming pools and tennis courts, but if they also have data about Paris, just share them and we should work on a, on, on a tool that helps them sharing the data as easy as right clicking on okay. the file. Okay, so it's mostly for improving uh, interaction with the community, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Oh, the question there. So we have a question. No, no, no. I take them. Courageous people should be rewarded. Uh, I was wondering uh, with Socrata uh, previous presentation, uh, if you also plan to provide l uh, directly in the API or around directly the link to the raw data before the API, because most of the time you have one open data portal, you have one API, and you don't make the relationship between both. Wait, you mean Paris has an API, uh, an open data portal and an API? Uh, uh, yes, because on one side I know there's open data Paris, Yes. And on the other side, you have the API. But uh, people who want to get the raw data without querying the API have to find out doing a second search, search the data you're exposing through your through well, your API. Well, open data, Paris open data is not Paris numeric. It's something else. It's about political, and so we we don't have hands on uh, Paris open data. <laughs> okay, thanks. You hit the point. <laughs> About those different sources of information, is it only for Paris inside Intramuros, or is it for the full Paris? I mean, you know the banlieue exists too. Is there a way to get inform data from the banlieue? Uh, as far as I know, I, I, I don't see any limits, but like the, the equipments we have on our database are mainly inside Paris. But for example, the... Um, the website kefer.paris.fr that shares events, and we also share the, this data through the APIs. Then you can get all every events uh, that are presented in this website. There are also events uh, outside of Paris, but it's closed, uh, 
close banlieue of Paris, <laughs> suburbs of Paris. So last question. Um, yes, thank you. I just want to know this, this, the interaction you have with the communities is only with Parisians, so you also have the call center also speaks other languages for tourists. Excuse me. Oui, l'interaction que vous avez, parce que vous créez ça pour interagir avec la communauté. Donc la communauté, c'est que des Parisiens. Ou est-ce que vous avez aussi une interaction avec d'autres visiteurs étrangers, d'autres langues So the question is. C'est la question. No, do we do we have interaction with other than Parisians? Yeah, well, it's a website. It's accessible to anyone. So anyone that wants to use Paris data uh, can can use it. The but the call center is just like a, a number that Parisian can call and have um, information about the city. But it's not. They are not answering on data we are providing through APIs. It's mainly about issue of a Parisian li everyday life. Uh, but the, the website api.paris.fr is accessible to everyone. Everyone that creates an account at Paris Numérique uh, can, can use it. So it's not only provided to Parisians, but we, we want Parisians that know that their city to share the data they have also. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Valentin.